there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I'm in the thick of rebuilding a Kawasaki Sherpa, that's a 250cc single cylinder four stroke twin overhead cam engine. And as part of the rebuild I need to do um, a valve clearance check. So this video is going to cover how to check valve clearance on a bucket and shim type valve drivetrain. So, uh, just to give you some background information, both exhaust valves have been lapped in, so we know for sure that the valve clearance on the exhaust valves will be well out of spec, no doubt. Intake valves, no idea, so let's find out. Here we go. Okay, so let's start with the inlet clearances first of all. And the spec for that is 0 0.10 to 0 0.19. So let's choose a feeler gauge, let's say, oh, I don't know, 0 0.15. That's sort of in the middle, isn't it? Yeah, for the inlet. So there you go, look, 0 0.15. Okay, and these are my special little Yamaha ones, which are brilliant for this job. Now, um, the crankshaft is at uh, TDC positions, the piston's right at the top of the bore and it's just about to start the power stroke, so we're what's called off cam, the lobes are well away from these buckets down here. Right, let's pop that through there, what do we get? Well, that's pretty good actually, just a little bit of drag, yeah, okay let's just try the next size up and see where we are with that. So the next, th or the thinnest feeler gauge that I have is 0 0.02. So we stick that onto the 0 0.15. That's going to give us 0 0.17. Now, when you're setting valve clearances, I always try and set them with the largest permissible gap because over time it's only going to close up and that's going to sort of give it the longest possible service life before they need to be adjusted again. Because bucket and shim, let's face it, they're not the easiest things to, to set up. They're not like you know the old tappets where you can just adjust them with a, a spanner. Okay, so now we've got 0 0.17. Let's see if that's going to fit through there. Ooh, golly. It's a bit tight. No, not really. Only in certain places, which is a bit weird. Okay, let's go a bit bigger then. Right, let's give that a yes. So we'll look for, I've got a 0 0.03. That's the next thinnest. So let's tag that onto 0 0.15. See if that's going to work. Okay, so we've got a total of 0 0.18 millimetres, which is getting pretty close to maximum. Nah, that's not going to go through. Cool, okay, so 0 0.17 clearance for, and I've labelled these up for the left hand intake valve, which we class as number three. Okay, so we've still got 0 0.18. Let's see if that's going to go through the right hand one. No, good. Okay, so definitely below that. Let's just try the 0 0.15 on its own, just for speed. Yes, that does go through. Okay. And just because we really want to know what it is, let's find that 0 0.02. Okay, so a total of 0 0.17 now. Yes, just. Cool, so those two are exactly the same with a 0 0.17 clearance. 
Okay, time for the exhaust valves now. Let's start with number one, which is uh, labelled up as the, the, the left-hand exhaust valve. And the spec for that is 0 0.10 to 0 0.19. Oh, that's the inlet, sorry. Exhaust is 0 0.14 to 0 0.23. Okay, well, let's... Uh, well, we know that they've been ground, so... I don't know, let's start, let's start pretty low down. So 0 0.15 is the minimum clearance permissible. That'll tell us if we need to make some adjustments or not. I'm pretty sure we will. Okay, so 0 0.15. No, I didn't think so. Okay, let's go to... What's the next one down? Let's have a look. 0 0.1, I think. Yes, there we go, look. 0 0.1. So this is definitely outside spec if this goes through. Nope. Okay. Let's try a bit smaller. What have we got? 0 0.05. Way outside spec. Remember the minimum is 0 0.14. Okay. Let's try that. Yes. Okay, so we've definitely got a clearance of 0 0.05. Let's just stick that 0 0.02 on there and see if we can get it up to 0 0.07. Nope. No. Okay, let's call that 0 0.05. Right, one more to go, which is this valve. Okay, let's start again with 0 0.07, which we had on the last one. Nope. Okay. Let's take it down to 0 0.05. Nope. Okay, let's go straight to 0 0.02. That's the thinnest feeler gauge that I've got. Very fiddly, these ones. Nope, that's not going through either. Wow, okay, so we know that the clearance on that is, be is below 0 0.02 mil. It could be zero. It could actually be less than zero. It might be a negative clearance. This lobe might actually be holding open that valve slightly. We just don't know. So what we need to do is reduce that shim down, the thickness of the shim inside, and then do another check. Okay, so we've got our results. Let's take a look and see what we need to do. Okay, so our specifications, as per Mr. Kawasaki, the inlet valve needs to have, or inlet valves need to have between 0 0.10 and 0 0.19 clearance. Well, we've got 0 0.17 mils of clearance. Well, that's pretty damn close to maximum, so I'm going to sign that off and say that they're both good in spec. Now, for the exhaust valve, they need to have a minimum of 0 0.14, but realistically, we want to be aiming for 0 0.23 mil. Well, this one's got nothing, or maybe even less, and this one's only got 0 0.05 mil. So what we're going to need to do is change the thickness of the shims. Now, when I built this engine up, the shims that are currently in the, in the exhaust are 2.95 millimeters on both sides. Now if you don't know how thick your shims are, don't panic because when you pull them out you can measure them and then do your calculations. But I can do my calculations right now because I know what shims I've already got in there. Okay, right, let's do some calculations. So 
So, exhaust valve number one. Okay, well we've currently got a clearance of 0 0.05 millimetres. But we need really to have a clearance of 0 0.23. So the difference, so 0 0.23 minus the 5 gives us 0 0.18 millimetres. That's how much more we need to increase the clearance by. And the shim that we've got at the moment is a 2.95. So 2.95 minus 0 0.18 gives us 2.77 millimetres. That's how thick the shim needs to be, ideally, to give us the maximum clearance uh, to spec. The top end of spec, I call that. Well, I can't get shims that are 2.77 millimetres thick. I can only get them in increments of 0 0.05. So I'm going to have to go up slightly and bring that clearance down a fraction. So let's go for a 2.80. So that's the shim we need to go into exhaust valve number one. What about exhaust valve number two? Okay. Well, that had, let's say for now, it had a zero clearance. Okay, and we need it to be 0 0.23. Well, this is quite simple. It's currently got a 2.95 millimeter shim, and we need to reduce it by 0 0.23. So that works out to be 2.72. Now, again, I can't get a 2.72 millimeter shim. I can only get increments of 0 0.05, so we're going to have to again go up slightly, which means we're going to use a 2.75 millimeter shim. Okay, so exhaust valve number one needs a shim thickness of 2.8 millimeters, and exhaust valve number two needs a shim thickness of 2.75. Cool, right, let's get that pulled off and fit the new shims. Okay, well before we can take the camshafts out to get to the buckets and the shims, we need to slacken off the cam chain. So this is the cam chain adjuster on the side of the engine and you know most four stroke cylinder uh, most four stroke single cylinder engines will have one of these it's very similar and you're going to need to work out how to remove it. On the Kawasaki, we just take off the cap. That's going to make it a lot easier to get to those uh, those cap heads that hold it to the to the barrel. Now just be careful because there'll be springs and all sorts inside here. There we go, look. I'll get rid of that. Don't want to lose that. Okay. Right, now for a 5mm Allen key. Now when you come to refit these back on, you should always use a new gasket too. If you haven't got a new gasket, at least a bit of fresh gasket sealer. Okay, that's, that's one. Excellent. Okay, give it a wiggle, it should come off. Super job. Hmm. Not too far extent to the cam chain, it's not too badly worn on this bike. Excellent job. Okay, so the next job is to undo these bolts which hold on the camshaft caps, and then we'll be able to hook off the chain and remove the, we could leave the intake while actually in place, but we need to remove the exhaust camshaft. Then we can get those shims changed. Right, 10 mil socket. Right, here it goes. So we've got to remove this one. And we've got to remove these. And 
these two. Oop, sorry, camera. Can't wait to get this thing fired back up again. Next job, WR250. Yay. Okay. Great stuff. Right, flat screwdriver, I think. Okay, let's just leave that up out of the way if it'll come up. Excellent. Just be careful of dowels because sometimes they go flying around a bit. There we go, there's one look. Okay, leave that in there for now. Right, and then this side, that should just come off by hand, I think. Excellent. Right, so now we can unhook the cam chain. At the same time, pull that out. Just drop that down, it won't go anywhere, it's on that one. And if you look in here, these are the two buckets. And underneath those buckets are the shims that we need to replace. Now, what you're going to need is a pair of long nose pliers and very carefully lift them out. Try not to damage them if you can help it. Maybe a little bit of rubber hose on the ends of your pliers is a good idea. Okay, we'll just pull that outer left hand sh uh, bucket out to expose the shim. Oh, nearly. There we go. Cool. And inside there is the shim stuck to the bottom side of the bucket. Right. One shim. Okay, so the one that's come out, just zero that. There we go. This is the shim that came out. It should be 2.95. There enough. There we go. And the one that's going to go in should be 2.8. Perfect. Right. Let's get that installed. So we'll just pop the shim back in that little recess there, look. And then, just slide the bucket back over the top. Perfect. Right. Time for the second one. Now this one's a lot easier from this side. So we'll just stick that on there. Excellent. Okay, now the shim just fell out of that one. Come here, you little bugger. There we go, sat in the oil. Cool, old shim. Okay, so here's the old shim that's just come out of number two exhaust valve. And where are we at? 2.95. And this one's gonna get one that's 2.75. There we go. Right, let's pop that in. And stick the bucket back over the top. Brilliant. So there you go. That was a really quick video just showing you how to um, basically take out the old shims, do some calculations, work out what thickness shims that you need in order to get the right clearance on the valves. I'm going to put all that back together and then we'll do a final check. Then we'll sign this video off. Okay, so the timing's all set, camshafts are back in, they're all torqued down on the caps, and the crankshaft is at TDC, piston at the top obviously, 
and about to start the power stroke, which means that the valves are completely off cam, so we can take our measurement again, and I reckon we should be somewhere around about 0 0.20 millimetres. And the exhaust spec, just to recap, is 0 0.14 to 0 0.23. Okay. Oh, look at that. Bloody perfect. Right. Other side. Right, that one's a fraction smaller. So let's go down to 0 0.18, I think it was, wasn't it, we had? Well, that's still a bit tight. Okay, 0.5 and 0 0.02. A bit hard now because it snapped off my feeler gauge set. But anyway, we'll give it a go. Wow, that was definitely a negative clearance before, wasn't it? Then? Okay. Well, let's just try 0.15 on its own. Cool. Okay. Right. So we've got 0 0.20 millimetres of clearance on this, on the left-hand exhaust valve, and 0 0.015 on the right-hand exhaust valve. Now, it's not exactly what I wanted, but we are still within spec, so I'm going to sign that off. Job done. Okay, so the final measurements revealed the fact that exhaust valve number two, when we first checked it, it had zero clearance it most definitely had a negative clearance, which means that the, the valve wasn't fully uh, closing. So the clearance we've currently got is 0 0.15 millimetres. That's right on the edge of spec. And over time, all that's going to do is get smaller and smaller and smaller as the valve wears into the head. So realistically, I need to pull it apart again and change that shim, which is currently a 2.75 millimetre, down to a 2.7 and that will take the clearance up to 0 0.20 it'll add basically you know add an additional 0 0.05 of clearance which is fantastic so next time I'm down at the bike shop I'll get another shim I'll get a 2.70 millimeter and I'll do the job all over again it's a bit hit and miss with shims unless you've got a full set where you can just cherry pick and choose as you go along it becomes a bit of a long and drawn out job most people that do their own work tend to go down to a bike shop and buy a, you know, a set of the shim sizes that they need rather than pay for a whole box of shims. But you know, if you're going to run the bike for a long period of time, it definitely pays to buy a whole box. It's expensive though. It's about 200 bucks a box. Golly. Okay, well that brings us to the end of how to um, check valve clearance and adjust valve clearance on a bucket and shim setup. My name is Andy Young, I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland and you've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now if you found the video helpful, why not subscribe to the channel, click on subscribe and you'll see a little gear icon, click on that and then you can tick the box to turn on notifications and that way our friends down at YouTube will send you a video as and when I upload any new videos. Also you'll find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google Plus and Twitter and feel free to use any of those portals to contact me but please I urge you first port of call use the comment section on YouTube really helpful because that way people that watch the video will see your comment questions they might see my answers to them as well and then they're all they've got all they need they can crack on and get their job done easy okay crew thanks for watching cheers over and out